Let me introduce you to something totally different, and I mean totally different, as far as air guns go. Hi guys, this is Rack and Load, and this is the Crownland electric air gun. What? Yeah, electric, you heard me right. This thing takes batteries. So it is 4.5 millimeter, it's a BB, and it's classed as an AEG. So an AEG is pretty much like uh, an electric airsoft gun. So there's an AEG, that's a Daniel Defense uh, Speckner Arms AEG. Six millimeter, fires the plastic uh, ball bearings or BBs. So that's like your general sort of airsoft gun. Works with a, uh, a gearbox. So basically you put a battery in it, the motor's in the pistol grip with like a pinion gear that operates a piston which pushes air, which drives the pellet or BB or round or whatever you want to call it. That is how an airsoft gun works, an AEG airsoft gun. But it has been done, and I wasn't aware of this until pretty recently, but it is it has been done with a metal firing BB, you know, your, your standard sort of uh, 4.5 millimeter or 177 BBs. This is an electric AEG metal BB firing 4.5 millimeter air gun. Oh yeah, there you go. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, I've got two here. I've got two. These are very kindly on the on loan from uh, I Wholesale here in the UK. So they have lent me these to get on the channel and tell you all about them. So I hope I explained that pretty well, did I? All right, then let's put it in layman's terms. So basically, you have a battery. In this case, it's an 850 LiPo battery. This is a Bigfoot one. You plug it in, in the back. So this thing does not take CO2. It is not a springer. It's not a brake barrel or anything like that. I've got to try and get this, this uh, rear end off now. So yeah, so basically you take the stock off like that. Oh, the mag's falling out as well. So you take the stock off. And then you'll notice here, there is a plug. You plug the battery in, like so battery is plugged in now I'll leave it like that and obviously it's not got a mag in or anything but all of a sudden there you go it's only semi-auto because if it was fully auto here in the UK it would be illegal yeah I know go figure even a BB gun not an airsoft gun not a six millimeter airsoft gun perfectly fine here in the UK to have a full auto one but because this is metal firing, you can only have semi-auto. So yeah, your battery goes in there. Pretend I've left the battery in there, but I haven't, I've unplugged it. You put that back on. You load your magazine up. So this is your magazine. They look a, bit, a little bit weird, but basically you use a BB loader, which is one of these. So basically you put all your BBs in here. You fill this up. And then what you do, you just get your magazine, put that on the end like so, and then just keep pressing that and it pushes the BBs into the magazine. 50 round magazine, and then what you do once you load it up, you just put your mag in like so, give it a bit of a tap. You're all connected up, switch from uh, safe to fire. It does, it does say auto on there, but trust me, I did try it and it's just semi. Okay, so semi or auto is just semi auto, so don't get too excited here in the UK. And then that, away you go. You just basically pull the trigger and you've got 50 shots. And I've got to tell you guys, this is serious, serious fun. You've not got to worry about gas or CO2, you know, in cold weather when it's just an absolute pain and it's unreliable. You haven't got to break the barrel on it and cock it each time. It's just easy, easy plinking. I am blown away by this thing. 
I know it's an AR-15. Some guys will be like, oh, you know, not really into the military look or anything. But for this type of shooting, back garden plinking, I think this is perfect. And do you know what? For someone that shoots uh, real steel firearms as well, I've got to tell you, this thing is built pretty damn well. In fact, I think it's built better than a lot of uh, rimfire uh, AR-15s, if I'm going to be perfectly honest. It's absolutely solid. Now, it's all aluminium construction on the bottom, uh, like the upper and the lower, although you can't, mm, or can you? Do you know what? I've never tried. I don't know whether you can. I'm not going to mess about because it obviously it's a, it's a slightly different operating system to, you know, a normal firearm or anything. So I'm not sure if the upper and the lower do separate. They look like they do, but I'm not going to do it because, like I said, there is a gearbox in there. And like I briefly explained at the start of the video, you have a motor in here, so you can't sort of just swap out the um, pistol grip or anything. There is actually a motor in there, which has got a pinion gear, which drives a piston, which produces the air that fires the, uh, the BB, okay? So every time you pull that trigger, it's spinning that motor, which is, you know, oper operating a gearbox, which then moves the piston backwards and forwards as fast as you can pull the trigger. Totally, totally cool. Controls work pretty much the same as the real thing. So you've got a uh, magazine release here. He says, there we go, you've got to give it a good press. So magazine uh, drops out like that. That's underneath. So that's the inside of the magwell. So you can see where your BBs feed there. Magazines do look very cool. You know, they look just like the real thing apart from that end. Uh, but that is spring loaded and that is what sort of pushes your BBs up as you shoot. Real solid construction. I mean, absolutely rock solid. What kind of struck me and in a lot of, you know, high end firearm rifles, you don't see this, but the lineup between the handguard and the upper with the Picatinny rail is really, really pre precise. You don't often see that in firearms. So to see it here where it's absolutely spot on, it's quite surprising. M-lock uh, on the uh, front hand guard here, you've got pop-up uh, backup iron sights or BUIS, whatever you want to call them. That's pretty cool. Fibre optics, I love fibre optic uh, sights. I've not seen a ghost ring like that though with its fibre optics, so that is really cool. Uh, obviously you've got Picatinny rails so you can chuck on a scope or red dot or something like that. Adjustable um, rear stock there on a buffer tube. Just really, really cool. Let's flip this one round so you can see the other side of it. These are just so much fun. I mean, just amazing. You know, this is what I love about air gunning is the way things just evolve and change. And obviously this has come from the airsoft world. Someone's decided to, you know, make a, a 177 metal beef BB firing rifle. And they've absolutely nailed it with this. I'm so, so impressed with this thing. Now that is not a silencer. I'll unscrew it. They do have an opposite thread, okay, because it is, you know, it's, well, I think they have used airsoft parts um, on this. Uh, but this is more of a barrel shroud. So as I take this off, you'll see the actual barrel there. So that's the actual barrel. Okay, smooth bore barrel, because obviously you're firing uh, BBs. I was using uh, those ASG, uh, blaster BBs, let's just try and get that on straight, uh, which work really well. I mean, BBs, they're not amazingly accurate, but this was uh, this was pretty pretty accurate with the uh, firing these. Oh, so no wonder that's not going on. I'm not, I've got to screw it the opposite way. It's opposite thread. But yeah, I was using these normal um, 
what I say normal, the, the standard sort of 177 BBs, uh, these ASG blaster ones. They were working really well. I was shooting at a target, just paper target. I was just literally blasting away as you do. Like I said, you're not gonna go for a, a massive accuracy with one of these. You're just gonna plink away. But I was happily shooting away at 30 yards with this, just shoot, literally obliterating a paper target, having amazing fun with this thing. T-bar on it actually works, okay? So it's not blowback, which would kind of be cool, but you know, I guess it would just use the battery up. But but that is um, your uh, your T-bar. You don't have to cock it or anything. There is um, a dust cover there. Just really, really cool. Let me throw out some specs. I should have sort of thrown out some specs uh, a while ago, but let me just throw you some out. So basically, this thing weighs in at three. 1,250 grams, the overall length, well, depending on where you set the um, rear stock, because obviously it's adjustable, between 758 and 840 millimeters. It takes an 11.1 .1 volt battery, okay? So that's what they say in the specs. That's the battery I was using. That was what was supplied with this rifle. 50 round metal magazine. Uh, it's an M4 mid cap style magazine. Velocity is around 450 feet per second. To be fair, I didn't chrono it. It takes 4.5 millimeter steel BBs or 177. This, everything is full metal on it. It's all full metal apart from the plastic stock. Pop up iron sights, manual safety catch. And that's pretty much it for your specs. Overall length, did I say the overall length? Yeah, I told you the overall length. So yeah, that's pretty much your your specs for this, uh, this rifle. Honestly, guys, I love plinking. You know me, you know, I shoot firearms, I shoot airsoft guns, I shoot air guns. But I do love plinking in the back garden. It's my sort of chill time. You know, where you can just sort of relax on a Sunday afternoon, just shoot some targets, shoot some uh, tin cans, whatever. And this thing has been so much fun. Let me show you the box. So here is the box, cardboard box, Crown Land. Yeah, it's made in Taiwan, but so what? A lot of good stuff is. Let's open the box tell you what you get with it there's probably stuff in here that you don't get with it so that's your box pretty much you don't get the charger because i've chucked that in there but you get you do get one magazine which i've showed you you get your um bb loader you get two sections of rail as well okay so two sections of rail and you get a uh, qd um sling swivel there as well which is pretty cool so you can really have some fun with this with this rifle set it up how you want go full on tactical for killing those uh, tin cans in the back garden but yeah very very cool guys very cool um it's it's something new i think we're going to see a lot more of this sort of stuff you know, electric, is it the way forward for air guns? Is CO2 gonna be a thing of the past? I wonder if someone's gonna come out with an electric um, 177 BB firing pistol, or maybe pellet firing. Would, would they be able to do it with the pellet firing? Mm, I don't know, don't know. But it's interesting times, guys, very interesting times and very exciting times at that but yeah the crown land venator i think that's how you say it venator the mark ii aeg auto electric gun i think that's what aeg stands for you think i'd know that yeah i've always thought it as airsoft airsoft electric gun auto electric gun oh whatever but yeah it's got a gearbox, it's got a motor, it takes a battery in the stock, 
no need for CO2, no need for cocking it. Just charge your battery and away you go. I shot this for phew, two hours. I was just loading it, shooting it, loading it, shooting it, and I've not had to charge the battery up, okay? So I've not had to charge the battery up yet. So I've not, you know, just shot at it and shot at it and shot it until the battery has just died on me. So not sure how long the battery would last, but like I said, I shot this for two hours and, you know, I kind of sort of, you know, I had a good sort of shooting session and it was still going strong. So, but anyway, guys, I am going to leave it at that. What a cool, cool bit of kit. Very, very impressive. The Venator from Crownland. Electric. Cars are going electric. Why not air guns? Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. Thanks for watching, guys. That is Rack and Load. See ya.